My name is Ksenia Blinova. I'm leading an induced pluripotent stem cell facility at FDA. And I'm also part of SIPA cardiomyocyte working group. So the working group is led by HESI, and the goal here is really to check the results from ion channel group and in silico reconstructions to see if we might have missed something using human-induced pluripotent stem cell-derived cardiomyocytes. These cells have been studied pretty well, and SIPA will use well-established uh, technical approaches to study drug effects. Uh, but before uh, SIPA experiments began, we conducted an FDA internal comprehensive study of drugs that then informed and helped to optimize the protocols and it, <laughs> and um, improve the design of the SIPA study. So we studied two commercially available IPS cardiomyocyte lines. Um, we first characterized gene expression profiles for the three ion channels. We then studied two high-throughput electrophysiological platforms, including microelectrode array, or MEA, and optical imaging with voltage-sensitive dyes, VSD, uh, to test 26 drugs, including eight drugs studied in prior FDA-sponsored clinical trials led by David Strauss Group. And in addition, we had uh, manual patch clamp data for four ionic currents for 24 drugs in this study. So here are gene expression levels for the three ion channels that were primarily affected by the drugs in this study are shown for sodium uh, channel that's responsible for both late and peak sodium current, calcium and HERC for the two commercially available IPS cardiomyocyte cell lines shown in orange and gray and normalized to the human ventricular tissue shown in blue. And you can see that sodium channels are underexpressed in IPS cardiomyocytes as compared to human heart. Calcium channels are significantly overexpressed, and um, expression of her potassium channels depends on the cell manufacturer. So here is a sample of the data that we obtained for all 26 drugs, and I'm using the satellite here. Uh, so on the left is manual page data. And on the x-axis is the fatalet concentration. On the y-axis, percent ion channel block. And the solid vertical line corresponds to clinical CMAX for this drug. And the dotted lines are concentrations that we used in stem cell studies. So you see that the fatalet is pure per potassium channel blocker at the studied concentrations. Um, and the, on the right, I show the effect of the fatalet on drug-induced uh, action potential duration and QTC, clinical QTC. So effect of the fetalite in two commercial available IPS cell lines shown in gray and orange, and clinical QTC prolongation is in blue. Everything is milliseconds here. And you see that the fetalite induced dose-dependent action potential prolongation and arrhythmias at high doses. Interestingly, for this drug, uh, stem cell response was higher than clinical response. So to summarize, um, we had 26 drugs in this study, and 20 drugs uh, are linked to QTC prolongation. Out of these 20 drugs, 14 are also associated with TARSAD risk. We also had six negative control drugs that do not have QT prolongation or TARSAD risk on FDA-approved label. So out of 20 drugs associated with QT prolongation, 17 induced action potential duration prolongation, shown in bold here, and 16 induced field potential duration prolongation, shown in italic. This is similar characteristic that comes from microelectrode array recordings in stem cells. And out of 14 drugs associated with TARSAD, 10 induced arrhythmias in IPS cardiomyocytes. So none of the six negative control drugs induced action potential prolongation of arrhythmias in stem cells. So overall consistent response to herb potassium channel blocking drugs, APD prolongation and arrhythmias were observed, and also to calcium channel blocking drugs, APD shortening and prevention of arrhythmias. 
uh, and we got more variable response to late sodium current blocking drugs. So the results of this um, collaborative study was summarized in this paper that was just accepted for publication in toxicological sciences. And the conclusion was really that the results confirmed the potential of IPS cardiomyocytes for proarrhythmia prediction under CEPA. And that multi-site validation study was warranted. And this is what CEPA cardiomyocyte group is doing. First, they completed pilot study and evaluated reproducibility and variability of EP responses across multiple cells, multiple platforms, and importantly, multiple volunteer sites for a small set of compounds, eight compounds. And phase two validation study with all 28 CEPO drugs is in progress. Uh, this study will include four MEA sites and three voltage sensitive optical technology core sites. And we will be using two commercially available IPS cardiomyocyte lines. And results will be compared with perspective and silica reconstructions, but also with clinical categories, known categories for these drugs of high, intermediate, and low to sad risk. Um, I'd just like to conclude by acknowledging my FDA colleagues and our collaborators among stem cell providers and instrument providers, and thank you for your attention.